Hi there, in this fifth video in the Advanced Photoshop series, I'm going to show you how to touch up skies. Uh, for example, I brought a picture into Photoshop. It's an okay picture, but the sky is very, very dull. Very dull. The key here, though, is that the sky still has color. It's still bluish. If you have a totally blown out sky, if it's very white, none of these techniques will work. It has to be remaining with some color. And basically what I want to do is I want to bring the sky color more into the midtones. I want it darker. I want it be more vibrant. There's two very different techniques, but they achieve roughly the same thing. I want to show you both just for ha-has. It's never a bad thing to know how to do something multiple ways. Well, first thing is I only want to work with the sky, so I want to mask out everything else. Okay, so I go into quick mask mode. So I click the quick mask mode button. I have my paintbrush painting in black, a big enough size, and it's a soft fuzzy brush. So I'm going to just start painting. And I want to paint the sky. I'm trying to be careful not to paint too much into the building. I am painting into the building sadly so I will have to go and touch that up after I'm, d after I'm done with this. Okay, I'm just going around. Okay, roughly good. Now I have to clean up the building so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to make it a white color this is going to remove mask and I want to make it a smaller bristle size maybe about 120 or so okay and now I'm just gonna clean up the building yep now if I had my sweet time to take I could make this much much cleaner but this is a rough edit and you'll get an idea of what it can look like but it can look better if enough time is spent on it okay a little bit more yeah I'm not too happy with this I'm gonna make my bristle size a little smaller go in here touch that up okay I'm just gonna touch this up a bit more Okay, roughly. And I already know ahead of time that I want to reduce a little bit of the mask on these trees because they're a little bit dark to begin with. So, again, painting in white, I'm going to remove a little mask, but I don't want to remove it all, so I'm going to bring my opacity down to about half, 50%. Okay, and I'm just going to remove a little bit of the mask around the trees and around the trees over here. Okay, good. Now I'm happy I go into normal mode and I've selected everything but the sky so to select the sky I do a select inverse okay now here's where the two techniques come in you could do a curve edit and just pull down the midtones so if I go to image adjustments curves and I pull down the midtones there it's done what I, what I wanted it's darkened the sky made it a little bit more vibrant so if I unpreview that and preview it there's a very big difference that's one way to do it uh, let me show you the other way so I'm going to cancel this out that was easy and it allowed a lot of freedom but this is a totally different method well I have this guy selected and what I want to do is I want to copy just that selection and make it into a new layer. It's very simple to do that in your layers window, which I have in the bottom right corner. I'm going to right click the background and I'm going to select layer via copy and that's going to make a new layer with only what I have selected. Okay, so I click that. Now, right now I have the blending style set to normal but if you click the drop-down box you have a lot of different options 
tons of options, and each one does their own little thing. Let me show you uh, Multiply. Multiply does basically the same thing as that curve edit. So I click Multiply, roughly the same exact thing. And I can change the opacity amount to vary how much of an effect I want. Zero opacity means no effect, and the higher I get to 100, the more the effect. But the power here is that you don't have just Multiply, you have many different options. You have Vivid Light, you have Hard Mix, you have all these sorts of things, Screen, Color Burn, all these sorts of different things that you can just flip through and experiment around. This is a great way to just fiddle around, have some fun, and see what type of wacky things you can do. Well, I like the Multiply, so I'm going to keep that. And now I have to make the picture I, I'm looking at the real picture instead of just two layers. And to do that, I click on the arrow in the top right corner of the Layers window, and I click Flatten Image. And that makes both layers into one image, which I see. Okay, I like this a lot. The only other thing I do is I try and bump up the contrast a little bit in the ground, so I'm going to do that. I go back into mask mode, and again with a soft black brush of the correct size, I'm going to just select the ground. Okay, very good. I go back into normal mode. Uh, let's see. I notice I still had the opacity at 50%, so I have to redo that. My mistake. Okay, bump the opacity up to 100%. Damn, Drew. Damn, I was doing so good. Okay. There, let's try that again now. So now I go back into normal mode. And I want to select the ground, so I do a select inverse. And let's try an auto contrast. And there. It's made it brighter. More contrasty. Let me just try an auto level. No, I don't like that. And there we go. So I deselect everything. Select, deselect. And there's my picture. Uh, if you compare it to the original, I'd wager, and I'd argue that the edited version looks better. I personally like it a lot more with the sky bluer. Okay, I hope this was helpful in showing you how to make images pop a little bit more.